First of all, um, what a crowd. <laughs> it's amazing. Welcome, everybody. There's only one reason to be here all together, and um, it is for an artist who told me uh, in the beginning of her career that when she did performances, seeing 20 people was a great crowd. And in 2010, she made a performance which most of you know under the title, The Artist is Present um, at the Guggenheim, for three months, 700, and I hope I don't get it wrong, 36 hours, reaching 850,000 people. So, quite a difference. And I can very proudly say that when we invited you with the Pinchuk Art Center, the Victor Pinchuk Foundation, in less than 48 hours, we had more than 4,500 people who wanted to see and hear Marina Abramovic speak. As you know, the reason for us to invite Marina Abramovic is because we have this exhibition at the Pinchuk Art Center right now called Fragile State. And the idea of a fragile state is, in my uh, opinion, central into the work of Marina Abramovic. But not just because we have this exhibition. Marina also spoke at the YES conference, which is taking place right now in Kiev and wanted to address you, um, as always a young, powerful audience, to feel your energy and to tell you about her own work and what she thinks about art and performance. And the one thing I can tell you, this is a person who has an incredible power, as you know, who is relentless in her commitment and in her energy and I would like to ask you, without further ado, please give her a fantastic applause, the one and only Marina Abramovic. Wow. Hello, Kiev. Hello, Ukraine. Hello, all the friends who are here tonight. You know, it's so strange. It's so many people. It's like, I'm not a star. I'm just an artist. But I really try to do my best to talk to you about art, life, and everything else. And we're going to have conversation one-to-one, -one, whatever you want. I am here for you. The first question I have, who is the most younger person in this audience? The age, I want to know. <laughs> who is the youngest? Please, anybody 12? 13? 13, wow, 10 points. And who is the oldest? 13, Ex fine. And who is the oldest? A part of me, of course. <laughs> but who is the oldest? Who is the oldest? Somebody here? How old are you? 55? 65 is still young. But anyway, but I really, it's really important this, to see the range of audience I really like to talk tonight. You know Martha Graham, who was a great choreographer in, in, Europe, in America, she said once that everywhere where the dancer dance is the holy ground. And I was thinking of this statement, for, for me, it's not true. For me, whatever audience sit on these chairs in front of me or come to my performance, they are occupied in holy ground. For me, public is everything. Because you can't do the performance without the public. I never could do any of these things I've been doing that you're going to see and some other stuff without actually public. You can't do them in your private situation. For simple reason, you don't have this kind of energy. Public gives the energy. Public complete the work. Public gives you something that actually you own private self can't do to yourself. So, if we think about hierarchy of art, generally, 
for me, absolutely on the top, absolute top, is the music. Music is the highest art because it's the most immaterial of all. There is, no, there is no object between you and receiver. Music is incredible. Immateriality of music is the absolute. After the music comes the performance and then everything else. But this is my you know, subjective point of view. I'm, I'm doing performances 50 years, so I will not tell you that the paintings that have the same energy. Of course they have, but it's just different kind of energy. So, where do I to start? I like to start just to talk to you about how you know you're an artist. That's a simple question. You know, when any student come to me and say, I want to be an artist, I for certainly know that he will never be an artist. Because you can't want to be an artist. You are artist or you're nothing. That's it. Artist is the same as a breathing. You have necessity to breathe the air, and if you don't breathe, you die. So the same necessity you have, you wake up in the morning and you have need to create something, to create something with your hands, with your mind, in your studios, then you're pretty much an artist because you're obsessed by being an artist. The same as a baker, you wake up in the morning, you want to make the best bread possible, or gardener, you want to make the you know, garden. The artists have to have this kind of obsession, have to have this kind of determination and fear, like, like, a, like a fire, like you're burning from desire. But then, you know, you know you're an artist, but you're not great artist yet. How you get great artist? Ah, that's a whole new set of sacrifices you have to make. First of all, you have to want this anything that anything else can happen. That you want to want with all your soul or any kind of molecule of your body you want to need, you know, to create and to sacrifice everything around you. Mostly family life, children, and everything else, you know? In my case, it's a very interesting point what everybody was asking me, but why the main artists are much more dominant than the women artists? And uh, people get very surprised from my answer. Because I said, because the women are not ready to sacrifice as much as the men. Because women want to have everything. They want to have love pure love, they want to have husband, and the children, and the work, and everything else, and the house, and, and the friends. You know, bad news, you can't. If you, <laughs> you have to sacrifice everything for the work. That's it. And the, for men, it's easy, you know. Men have the woman to do all this stuff. So, women artists, is kind of a hard job. Lots of lonely rooms, hotels, lonely aeroports, traveling, but it doesn't matter all this, because on the end come the work. And the work is everything you will ever have. And if you have the work who transcends that your idea, and you make something so special that can stay in the centuries, you know, then it's worth it every single minute of that sacrifice. That's really what it is all about. Because good idea have many, many lives. And there's sometimes the good ideas are not accepted in the, in the century you live because you're too advanced or too in the front or in the future, whatever. But maybe it comes sometimes 50 years, 100 years. But the good idea never die. And history proved this over and over again. So now we clear this up. So where we are now? So now is, I like this to tell you the ideas how you should prepare to make work of art. And I like this old story of the Cennino Cennini from the Renaissance time. So he said, if an artist like Michelangelo or whatever, Leonardo da Vinci want to make a great work of art, what do you have to do? So this is the proposal, preparation. He should not eat meat for three months. He should not drink any alcohol for two months. He should not have any sexual ink intercourse for one month, and three months before he start, he should put his right hand, if he's right-handed, or left-handed, is left-handed, in a plaster, motionless. And then the moment when he start the work, he will break the plaster, take his pencil, pen, whatever he's using, is you know, as a tool to make work, and then he can make a perfect circle. He's ready. So that was the advice in Renaissance time. 
If we think about other advices, like in, in Eastern countries, talk Japan, China, you know, Asians, they talk about confronting themselves with the chi energy. So, long time solitude, away from the home, away from the cities, being on the top of the mountain, and being you know, in solitude, with very little eating, almost no eating, no talking, no communication. And then you really get ready, your state of mind, in order that idea will come to you. And this is how you make work of art. So from this all kind of preparations and learning that I went in my life, you know, going to Central Australia, living with Aborigines, being with shamans in, in, Aust in Brazil, uh, you know, who, learning very much from my Orthodox, you know, my grandmother and her religions, you know, the Serbian Orthodox Church, and then learning so much about also how we can push our body limits and mental and physical limits of our body to create different state of consciousness that we can actually create great work of art. So from all of that, I create something which I call Abramovich Method, which I'm going to talk to you much later. But right now, um, there's also a question, who artists, who are we? You know, the, the Maljevic said, we are the new bridge. The, um, New, actually, no, he didn't say new bridge, he said new step. And um, the Mondrian talk about true reality, and uh, Joseph Boyce talk about shamanism, and so on. And I feel myself always as a bridge. This is kind of my role. I feel that I'm bridging the cultures from my country, from coming from Mexico, Slavia, and you know, from coming from the middle of the bridge from between Eastern and Western world. On the, every bridge, there are winds, and the winds are very unstable and dangerous and full of wars and uncertainty. And, and you have to really find the balance of that bridge. So you're going to the east to get knowledge, and you're passing this bridge and giving knowledge to the west. And that kind of bridging cultures, it's a kind of my, um, you know, my, my function as an artist. And then it's very important for very early stage that in your life that you know what you really want to do and what you really are good at. And you know, to very few people doubt too much and they're changing professions and changing this and changing that and there's too much opportunities. But once you find something that you love, that your heart is there, that's a pretty good thing to follow. And regardless what the people say, family say, whatever, just follow the heart and intuition. I don't believe in um, studios. I don't believe in my work is about life. I go to do life, and then I take experience from the life, and then I, and then I go to studio to make it. But life is the first thing. I don't like to go to studio like employees go to the studio, and then you, know, you just sit there with all the computers and you think, what am I going to do? The really great art doesn't come like that. Come from the truly experience come from the moment when you risk everything. You have to risk things in order to find the new ways. You have to risk everything that you kind of push yourself out of you, you kind of, um, how you call the safety box of thinking and life. You know, to me, one of the most courageous things ever happened, it was definitely discovering of America with Colombo. Because think about that time in Colombo, want to discover different ways how to get uh, spices from India. And nobody wants to go with him for this trip. For simple reason that we they believe that the earth is a plate. And you take this risk, you actually can fall into unknown. You can fall off the plate. That's a kind of big risk. Now it's easier to go to the moon because we know more about science. But that time we didn't know anything. So the queen gave him the convicts, the people in prison, the, you know, the ones who are anyway, you know, have to stay in the prison all their lives, so nothing to lose. And then he made this last dinner in the little island called El Hierro, in Archipelagos, in Spain. And I'm always imagining this dinner with the convicts in Colombo, and next morning they're going to take this trip to Anon, and then maybe fall off the earth. So, they took the trip and they find America. That's the thing. Every time we have to take this kind of trip, we have to, have to go to unknown. And also you have to know that the good stuff doesn't come from happiness. Why? 
Because happiness is a stage that you are attached to and you don't like to change. That is how it is. But, happy, but I don't think that good things stop for depression. Depression is this easy to heal it. That's not the point. But it comes from really suffering. Suffering is the key to understanding. Suffering is the key to kind of put yourself on a different level of consciousness. So performance art has a lot to do with the suffering. You know, the three basic elements that performance art is dealing with, but these three elements are also dealing all art that you see that only the paintings or sculptures or different things. But performance is about, you know, staging suffering, the staging fear, the fear of pain, and, you know, fear of mortality. Because all of us, we're going to die, all of us, sooner or later. That's actually reality of, of, of the human existence. And if you put thinking of dying in your daily life, you enjoy every second of your life because only reality which exists is here and now. Oh my God, somebody's translating to you all this. If I'm too fast, of course I'm too fast. I completely forgot, but you understand? Wow, somebody's translating somewhere and now I'm talking so fast. And they told me specifically that I should talk slow because Ukrainian language is longer. I fucked it up all the way, oh my God. So how I'm doing? Are you understand? Come on, you're so young, all of you. So it's great. Okay, let's go on. So I forgot myself. What I said last? What I was talking? <laughs> About the dying, 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 dying. Always good. <laughs> dying is... So, you know, dying is a part of this, of the understanding here and now. All right, so let's go to some of, of the presentation I'd like to show you tonight. Um, this lecture, it's seven many different elements, so we see how we're going with time, because I want to make enough time to talk to you. Because, you know, you are like in my country, we like to talk, we like to ask questions, and we, want, and we are curious, so we're going to do that. But in the meantime, let me, so, let me show different things. So the lecture is based on artist body and public body. Wow, I need to take the coat off, it's too hot, wait a second. Much better. Okay, so the lecture is about artist body and public body. You see, performance is time-based art. You have to be there to witness and to see. And performance is immaterial, you know, body, because it's all about energy dialogue between performer and the public. And when you establish this energy dialogue, you have to measure if performance is good or not good. But if it's good, it can really transform you. But if it's bad, you hate performance in the first place, you know, which a lot of times happen. Okay, so I want to start with a very simple piece from a friend. is a young artist from Germany, Iris Selke, and uh, she made this work called Narcissus. You know, this is all about being, being incredibly um, superstitious. At least in my country, we are terribly superstitious. Black cat, you know, pass the road. If you see pregnant woman, you have to take bottom and throw it away. Sold, spilled, so bad, bad luck. So she takes seven mirrors and she just uh, break them with her head. I only show you one. finish, but now we have seven. I'm just showing you one to see the idea. Idea of the breaking superstition, breaking all this, working with your own head and not having fear that you get hurt. Okay, second piece is um, also young Turkish artist. And which I like about her, she is a really political piece in many ways because in the Turkey, especially 70s, 80s, 90s, there was always this export of the Turkish girls who, who do the, the belly dance. And uh, so she take belly dance music, she take instrument, which is hula hop, which is something that you would go around your waist, and she create a piece which completely different, different intensity and becomes something from joy to choking. <laughs>
You see what we can learn here, that actually performance can use so many different parts of the body. You can make performance just using head, using arms, using the entire body, using only stomach, using just any part and create message. And here the music, her, you know, she's not dressed normally like this, but she really took traditional dress in order to create that message. So performance, it's language. And it's really important to learn this language in order to understand how to read every piece. So let's go now next. So now we are going to some of my pieces. I just, I will not go and bore you with my work because you can look in the internet, so I'm showing the minimum is possible. But this is one of the early works that which I made. And this piece, oh, let me sit down and talk to you. So in this piece, I have a, I have a tape recorders and I have a ten knives. And I play in this very Russian game because the children play, you know, between the knives. And every time I cut myself, I change tape recorder. And I cut myself ten times, I change tape, I record everything tape recorder. And then I play this music one more time. And then I take the knife from the same place. And by listening where I cut myself, I try to repeat mistake one more time. So this work was very strange. It was my early performance in the early 70s, which I tried to find out how I can make mistake twice, and I only missed two times. And then I left tape recorder with lots of blood around and, um, and just playing this double sound. So this was the piece called Rhythm 10. It was very interesting for me, the music, the rhythm, and the danger of, of that game. Um, Then the piece so many people talk about, the, I really was young and it was very interesting this piece is the, how you can actually push the limits of the public. What if you give the public everything to do with you and how the public going to react and can public actually kill you? So, as you see here, 72 objects on the table for pleasure and the pain, including the pistol. The pistol had the one bullet and uh, there was uh, information on the table, very simple. I'm an object. I'm standing in the front of you for six hours. You can use everything on me, the nice things. Give me the rose or kiss me or uh, give me the, 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 the chocolate, whatever. But you can also use the sword and the hammer and, and hurt me. And on the end, you can put bullet in the pistol and kill me. And I will take entire responsibility, which I actually did. So, after the six hours of hell, basically, uh, in the gallery, and the uh, public in the beginning was just kind of playing with me, and then they really start getting more and more aggressive. And finally, they was, you know, walking around with me on the gallery, they will open the leg, my legs, put a knife between my legs, uh, one person will cut my clothes, give me the, give me the rose, and thorns of rose stuck in my belly, and so on and so on. So it was really, really, very heavy experience. All what I've been doing, just looking one point all the time and just kind of be completely without any participation. I am the object and they can do anything with me and if they kill me, that's my destiny. So, after six hours, the, the came the gallerist and say six hours is over. And this is the first time that actually members of the public I start walking like a normal person. I was full of blood and crying and it was really difficult for me. Then they just, uh, wait, this was the last slide. So that they actually ran away. I came to, the, to the, my hotel and it was by that time two in the night and I looked myself in the mirror and I had the gray hair, just a big piece of gray hair. Since then I'm painting all the time, but this I don't like gray hair. But I knew that the public could kill me. So this was then but it took me almost 30 years to understand that you can give tools to the public to kill, kill you, but you also can give tools to the public to lift their spirit and actually give them unconditional love. But this is a little later. It took me 30 years in between. Okay, so then I... Um, this is one of the very, very difficult performances I made, which is so much to do with, uh, you know, my background. My both parents are national heroes, and 
It fought the Second World War with Tito, and my and communist, and my grandmother is religious and Greek or, or the, the Serbian Orthodox, and I spent all my childhood with her in the church. So I have this mixture between willpower and communism and really spirituality. So this piece is a mixture of all of these things. Here, I'm eating entire pot of honey. I'm drinking one bottle of wine. I am... Um, breaking my glass. I am cutting five-point star with a razor on my stomach. I am um, beating myself till there's no pain anymore. Yeah. That really come to the limit of, it's, it's like a complete sacrifice. And then I lie on the cross of ice. Actually, I, lie on the, 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 I had to sign the kind of release form from the gallery that I would take, that would be on my own risk because nobody will let me do that. And the doctor who examined me told me if I lie under ice more than 10 minutes, I can just throw my kidneys out of the window. Okay, I lie on this ice for 30 minutes. And then the public went, run, and broke me the coats and took me out. And this is interesting because the top, you see this, this was a heater who's hitting the star, five-point star, which is really a communism symbol, was bleeding and all the rest of the body in the cross was frozen. So this is very complex Christian communist kind of mixture of somebody being 22 years old in that kind of country. And performance was my tool. Okay, now, where we are now? <sighs> oh, now I will left Yugoslavia. Okay, that's a long story. We just go some years in the front. And then I met Ulai, who was the man. I met him on my birthday. We are same day born. We separate on Great Wall of China, saying goodbye to each other after 12 years and so on. But we made some very radical pieces. We actually treated our bodies like a sculptures in the space. This is one of really violent pieces I'm going to show you. It's called Expansion in Space. In this piece, Expansion in the Space, we pushing the columns as fast as we can, without pushing with the hands, but the entire body. And really the sound of the two bodies colliding is, is there. So it's just a space, architecture, and naked bodies. This one for an hour. Now we have lecture, we have time limits, let's go fast. Just to get you a glimpse of this. It was quite a heavy idea that the body is in the space and it's just architectural element. Then we made some other pieces who are dealing with relationship. And one piece is how we can make the body as a musical instrument. So we decide to slap each other only one side of the face and uh, increase the rhythm. And we could not increase the rhythm faster, we just stop. So the idea of the body as a drumming element, we completely reduce the idea of the pain. We just ignore that exists. Okay, and so on. So when we increase the rhythm, we stop. Then the next piece was really about communication. We call ah, 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 and what we do, we are screaming in each other's mouths. And when one of us lose the voice, we stop the work. So this was early 70s work when experimenting with the limits of physical body.
the sound. It's really good acoustic here. <laughs> okay, okay. So let's move on. So this piece, Rest Energy, was a very important piece, actually. Uh, we are born the same day, and we met on our birthday. We are both Sagittarius, and we made this piece, which actually we are holding bow and arrow between our bodies. And uh, if one of us lose the grip, the arrow is going to my heart. And the only sound you're going to hear is the sound of the arrow, you know, being stretched, and then the sound of the two hearts with adrenaline going quite high. see what is my next. All right, you know, that relation stayed for 12 years and uh, we decide for very banal reasons, you know, to split, which was really the end of our relation. And uh, each of us walk from one side of Great Wall of China. Well, I walk from Gobi Desert, I walk from the mountain, we walk two and a half thousand kilometer to say goodbye. And a friend of mine said to me, why you just didn't make phone call? It was so easy. <laughs> I think it's important how you meet, how you live your life, and how you split. Have everything have its own time. So this work for me was really very painful because on the end of that journey, I was 40. I felt fat, ugly, unwanted, and I was thinking this is the end of my life. I was like, that's it, because we've done work together. It was very important to me, this collaboration, because it was the idea about putting male and female energy together and putting in one thing, that you lose your ego as a female and the male lose ego as a male and create something which we call that self. That the third element who have the kind of possibility to be grow and to be free and to and to have something really exciting and different than just you know classic relation of you know man and woman and all the problems they have, but on the end I fail, and for me it was the failure very difficult. It took me for a long time to get out of this depression and create my own new work. So. Lots of work and lots of time passing between till comes to artist is present. So the artist is present was a very important piece for me. Uh, when I got invitation to do show in MoMA, it was a very big deal because, you know, um, performance art was nobody territory and it was not mainstream art. Having perform, having the actually showing the the documentation and work in MoMA means that you can accept it in a really historical way, that the UR means something. So I could just easily, you know, show the work, which was video installations and photographs and objects and so on, and go home and have a great time. But then I was thinking, but what I take the chance? and make something called artist is present and being present for three months, eight hours a day during the normal days and 10 hours on Friday when the museum is longer and to see this transformative force of performance. What if I show to Americans something they never saw? Because you know, American is fast culture and in New York live 455,000 artists. It's a huge competition. You come from nowhere. I come from the fifth world, ex-Yugoslavia. How you, you don't even have a space there. How you make space for this? Just in believing in the power of performance itself. So they give me atrium, and atrium is the worst place to have because it's like a tornado of things. There are, there are coffee shops, there are, there are library, there is things are happening up and down, things are moving, and the, you know, just vortex of, of passaging. But then, what if I, in this tornado, created the center? And the center of tornado is the eye of tornado, and eye of tornado is a stillness. So I done that, and then everything changed. 
people start coming and waiting for hours and hours. I, it was, I was just incredible. People start sleeping outside of the museum. People start being very emotional. And I was always asking, but why is this all happening? Why is this happening? And then I realized that actually I become very vulnerable. I'm sitting on this chair in the front of anybody in the front of me. You can take any amount of time you want if you want to sit all day, eight, day, eight hours, which one guy did seven hours and never moved. Or you can do whatever you want, you can do. But somehow I become a mirror of the public. And a mirror of the public, they, they trust that they can show the emotions. In America, people don't show emotions. Americans are medita medicated cities. They are living on pills to wake up in the morning, to go to sleep, to look television, to fall asleep, whatever. Because they're in kind of limbo. They're very afraid of showing emotions. They're not like you and, and my country. We really are emotional people. You know, when, I, when the, I go to the cinema and I don't cry, movie's not good anyway. I have to feel. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you are like this. So, you know, so this was the really incredible response of the public. And that actually, I understood when I finished this piece, when I stand up, I understood that my mission is much bigger than just being an artist, you know, and doing performances and that's it. That now I reach the public that I could never reach before large audience. I had the people who will come and wait for hours, who never even go to the museum, but they hear from the friend of the friend, and they will come, and they create the, this kind of, um, kind of um, you know, group of people who will just come sit more than 12 times with me and then go for dinners and share experience. So I have the guards of the museum who will go home, change their the, the, the clothes, and they will wait for hours just to have this experience. So that means the public, this is the man, seven hours, and then he sit another 21 times. It was incredible to actually meet him after I knew him so well <laughs> by looking at him. Anyway, so I stood up out of the chair and I was ready to really address the large public. I was ready to address the general public. I was not addressed, I was not interested anymore in art public. Art public is, especially these days, art public, the, the art becomes such a commodity. You know, if you sell one art work for 185 million, and you, I don't think you can see art anymore. When you see this painting, you just see money. You don't see what really essence of art is. And this all changed. One thing about, about the immaterial arts and about performance, you can't be this. You can't buy it. You know, it's, for, it's you, can, you can't, you only what you have is the memory and experience, and that's something that you can take forever. And that immateriality of performance art gives you this deep experience. So I was ready to create my legacy and to create institute. So this was a my, you know, Marina Abramovich Institute. I love, you know, I love this red and white and it's kind of, it's, I was just looking at your dresses here, very national and almost want to dress one. It's red and white, you have so much red and white. It's like something to do with happiness. But you know, if you think about red and white, I just analyze the color slots of in my life. I find out that in mythology, Chinese mythology, the red color stands for the menstrual blood of women and white color for the drop of sperm. So unification of that two colors create the world. Just to let you know. So it's a kind of deep meaning. <laughs> so I found the building. So the building is Hudson outside of New York and it was old and you know, kind of fucked up, but it was big. And we got this building, the, our foundation. Then we get the Remco house, the architect, we wanted to renovate, we make kickstarters, we got the money, but that money was just to pay for the architectural plans. When we got the bill for architectural plans, we find out that we can never do it. Oh, it just will cost 31 million, that's it. So we say, okay, bye-bye institute, like that, because this was the way how we should do it with the great glass and doors, because you start getting interested in the place when, and something which is so material, when you, you actually deal with something which is completely material, which is performance. Why to have a material building when you actually don't need it? But took us a long time to understand that. Okay, so now it's immaterial institute, much better. So where are we? We are everywhere. You, the, our logo before was you come to us, but now our logo is changed. 
you call us, we come to you. And that's what everything happened. And this is the places where we've been. And we have this enormous amount of audience, 250,000 in Brazil, 32,000, 12 days in, 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 in the, the Paulo, 4,000, whatever, you know. I didn't, we didn't write names, oh, we have to ask, to write you the numbers of visitors, it's huge. But as an immaterial institution, and um, one thing is missing on this map, it's Kiev. So, I really think we have to put the Kiev in this map. So, but before we, we are convinced. <laughs> yeah. But before you're convinced, you have to see what you're, what you're standing for. Wait, maybe you don't like it at all, at all. So let's, I have to really work hard to convince you. So, institute have a two functions. One is to create a Bramwich method in order to prepare the public to see long duration of work of art. Because we understood it's not just enough of performance killing himself in front of you when the public have his cellar phones and you know, I don't care like you guy in the, just right now, who is the, this one? Just look at him, you cellar phone right away. <laughs> but this is, I just talked to you, never mind. But you know, this is, this is what we do. Technology took all our time. And you know, technology was invented that human beings actually have time, they have space. But technology now, we are addictive. We are addictive you know, humans. We just want everything. So we are constantly with these gadgets all the time. So let me see the method. So this is what I'm proposing. The method, which I really took me a long time to actually try everything myself to create something simple that the public can use. I have designed this collective experience to give the public the opportunity to be free from this destruction and to be connected with themselves, with each other, and with present moment. That's very important. So, how we do this? Oh, wait, I have to go there. My favorite. Lockers, lots of lockers. So you go, you enter the, this virtual institute, can be anywhere. Because in here, in Kiev, which is wonderful, you have so many buildings, you have the old factories, you have the buildings who are ruined. I don't care about space. It doesn't need to be some kind of museum space. Actually, not at all. It should be out of museum, it should be stadium, it should be any of the spaces that actually large amount of public can participate. The idea is to create community. That's our main purpose. So, lockers, headphones. Headphones, you always get sponsored and completely block the sound, no sound. Wait, I'm going to sit this long time. Oh. Okay, the headphones block the sound. Next. Ah, so, let me show you something. Slow motion walking with the headphones this block the sound. Buildings. This is Brazil. different races. We work in different races. Very interesting, just something wrong. I love it. Okay, never mind. So, we do slow motion walking uh, with the public. So the public put the telephone, the, the, um, the headphones and the computers in the locker. Now they're free. They're free from all these gadgets, and they, they, they get headphones to block the sound. So they enter the space, and we have facilitators, very similar like they're now in, in um, Victor Pinchuk Institute, where we are doing this uh, generator with the blindfolded, you know, the experiment. So here, like this, probably the space, this was in, uh, in Sydney. So here, probably the space is from here to there. You can walk, I don't know, less than a minute from this to this place, but you can also take three hours. Time stop. If the moment you had these headphones and you don't look the watch and you don't look the, the, on the, 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 the telephone, you start having this complete different walk. You create different space and time. We also have exercise of, which is one of my favorite, opening and closing the door. Opening the door, not entering. Closing the door, not exiting. Just the action, opening and closing. Three hours. After three hours, the door is not the door. The door is a space, the door is cosmos, the door is like whatever. You know, the all ancient cultures are based on repetition. Repetition begs to the power of changing the, the concentration and changing the consciousness. So
So let's see more. Mutual gaze. This comes from artist is present, and this is really incredible. If you're looking at each other, the person you never met in your life, it's the eyes of soul, door of the soul. Then we have this one, counting the rice, one of my favorite. So you get lentils and rice, very simple. You have to divide them and you have to decide yourself to count them. So you count them as much as you want, but you have to make the first decision on how much you want to count. So when you decide big amount or small amount, do it till the end. If you promise yourself to count the rice, then really do it. Don't give it up in the halfway. Because if you can't write the rice and you can't stick to your decisions, you can't make life either. So this is some of the rice counting you know, situations. So this is a nice Swiss family. They just arrived and four hours later they're still counting in, in Switzerland. And then we create big tables that we are showing different places that you can just come and count this rice. And it's very interesting what's happening. You know, we say, okay, counting rice, what's the big deal? It's a big deal because first you're amused. You, you separate lentils and rice, fine. But then you start counting. You reach the point that you really get completely angry. What the fuck am I doing here? I don't want to count this. You know, I don't have patience. I, I am so stressed and nervous. Why, why I said to myself I'm going to do it? You pass that step, and then you say, no matter what, I have my willpower, I would do it anyway. When you reach that point, your breathing starts being normal, you start breathing slow, you concentrate, you come to here and now time, and you know that you can do life too. Look in the colors. I go a little bit faster because too many things to show, and God, we have to talk too. Okay, colors. I just public should look three basic colors. Yellow, red, and blue, the primary colors. Each of colors we ask public to look as a Bramwich method one hour. The color really is very interesting how it reacts on your nervous system. Red gives you energy, blue calms you down, and yellow makes you terribly nervous. We use yellow in advertising because the color to see the first. But to see how that color actually works in your nervous system by just purely experimenting, it's quite interesting. How you can actually put into your own life and benefit from it. Uh, platforms. Platforms are one of my favorites. They're just pieces of wood who are only that high like, I don't know, 10 centimeters high from the ground. But they're like energy spots. So, in, this is, in these platforms, we ask people with, uh, to have headphones and to be energetically together. Different races, different, different combination of people. Everything is so different. And we have this amazing, amazing concentration of energy there. i just show you some. Like this kid, you know? We have these platforms who we create, and I have this kid who was 12 years old. He will come every day after the school. And I ask him, but why are you coming here? He said, I like so much. I'm very bad in school, but I come here, I put my headphones, block the sound, I stand there, and then I go home, and everything is okay. So, then I have this family, which is for me incredible. Three generations, the same thing happened. I have a Bangladeshi housewife who comes and stay, stay on this platform. And I say, why are you doing this? Because I'm better with my children. I have the farmer who comes and say, I'm better with the plants. And I have a science fiction writer who said, since I do slow motion walk three hours every day, I actually create much better. So I am creating with the Bramwich method the tools for all of you to do what is the best in your own life. That's very simple. It's not art, it's just a method. And uh, we also have the method of just lying down and being together energetically collect, you know, connected uh, in the space. So I'll just show you some more faster things. Um, this was in Buenos Aires. You know, people, they each, everybody project differently. And here we have Pichuk generator in art center here. So what happens if you take one sense away? How you have to deal with the trust. You have to deal with different senses. We have to see how community work, what is the connection between people, how you work with the smell, how you deal with the space. So many things to discover. Very simple exercise, but lots of things deepens in that way. Uh, 
the cleaner was another performance which is done now in Stockholm, which we just asked people to listen to the choruses and the sound. This was the first time we don't have headphones, but actually we asked people to sing. It was also incredible communal experience because what happened if you have large amount of community, put them together and create the same like a radio wave, you create this kind of collective energy who kind of bring different consciousness. And this is a miracle. That's something that, that we are doing now everywhere. And this is something I would like to do in Kiev and I would like to do in a big way. I mean, every generation, young, old, just everybody gets into that space of, of concentration. Wait. So here, here was another thing in, in, which we done in Greece. In Greece, have so much trouble. They have refugees. They have the cultural problems. The, 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 the you know, the corruption. They have the, 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 you know, political problems. So what we do here. Is this work? Is, yeah, this is more. What we done here, we just ask people to come in a certain time and we ask them to connect with themselves for seven minutes in total silence. It was like heartbreaking. People just touched their the, the, the shoulders and they just generated this unconditional love for each other. We are human beings and we have so much forgetting it and we make a mess from this planet. So my work, especially right now in you know, after 50 years of doing aggressive things, is actually to lift human spirit. Is to, not to just reflect how bad it is. We all know how bad it is, but what we can feel to be better. So that was this, this amazing moment we had with drone filming. And it's just a normal public who just came to connect and then the stop. This was the moment the stop. Seven minutes. Okay, so where are we now? Uh, no. okay. the, oh yeah, this is one, I think. So, this is Brazil. I just show you here, actually, how this works with the community in Brazil. My relation to Brazil start so long ago. I went to the mines just to looking for idea. I actually want minerals to tell me what to do. When I asked miners if I could just sit on the chair deep in the mines or lie in the bed and let me alone there for a long period of time until I wait for an idea. They think I was completely crazy. When I told them that I got an idea to make shoes out of amethyst, huge minerals, weighing 70 kilo, they could not believe. How can you walk in these shoes? They asked. I was telling them, but these shoes are not for walking. These shoes are for mental departure. I don't think we need art in nature. Nature is so perfect already without us. We need art in the cities. We need art in the cities which human beings don't have any time. In the cities, they are polluted.
In the cities, they have too much noise. And they have to have headphones to block the sound. So they're driving in the environment which is total silence. We have to take experience from nature and transmit it into the cities. I always believe that the function of art is a function of bridge. To bridge different people from different social backgrounds. Different religious beliefs. different races. But it's also about communication between physical world and the spiritual world. Or just simply between two human beings. I think this trip was very important to me. Not just to get new ideas, but also to open my mind into something different. After I come back, somehow the puzzle came together in a very clear and bright image. I understood that I have to give tools to the public to experience their own self. I have to just blend in. I have to be like a conductor because I'm always performing in the front of the public. I'm engaging with the public. The public is my mirror. And I'm the mirror of the public too. Everybody have trauma. Everybody have loneliness. Everybody have fear of death. Everybody have pain. I'm giving part of myself and they give me part of themselves. because the only way they can understand in much profound level what performance is, is they make their own personal journey. I am removing myself completely from the public. Public is the work. And there I go into the cave. <laughs> okay. And so, wait, 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 wait. We still have to do a few things. So, now you know. You know a little bit of performance, the, 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 what artists, you know, how artists should think and all the rest. You know a little bit about my method, about my own work. But all this method is for the public, it's not for young artists. So, the, the, it's very important the function of the my 
is dealing with young performance artists, especially long durational performance artists. Because I found in my research, when you do something which is very long, if you do something one hour is easy, two hours, okay, you go home and that's it. But if you do something two months, eight hours a day, that's a hell. Become the, you actually performance become life itself. You can't pretend, you can't pretend three months, you, you can't actually uh, act three months. It's become, everything is real, real to the point that is like, is like frightening real. So uh, let's uh, just show you the few things, Brazil or Greece, some artists we work with. So what we do, we, let's, take the, we, let's take the Greece. So in Greece, we, we actually book entire Benaki Museum and we make open call to the Greek artists. So this is the, like very much the kind of um, idea we will have for here. So we opened the open call and everybody was telling to us, okay, there's no Greek performance artist, but we got 350 applications of the artists want to do long duration performance and they never done anything before. And you know, we look through the, all the applications and we choose 22 incredible interesting works. And then we took these artists for the actually training and the training we call, which is part of our mission in, of institute, is called cleaning the house. You can clean your own house so many times, but the only house you have to clean is your own body. That's the main house to be cleaned. Who cares about everything else? So we will take these 22 artists, we take them to a place who is never comfortable, or it's too hot or it's too cold. We put them five days with no eating, five days with no talking, in very uncomfortable situation, doing very heavy physical mental exercises, and training them for that task. Because to perform that long, you have to be in a good condition, my dears. Otherwise, you just can't do it. You can do it one, one, one hour. Because performance artists in the 70s can do it in one hour because they're pushing, the, the, you know, just working on the willpower. But you can't have willpower for three months. Even you, it's just, you have to have stamina and you have to be trained. So that's what we are doing. And from that came some really incredible pieces. I just to show you, before we start conversation, I just show you some of them. Okay, this is the one Terra Comunal in Brazil. So this is the artist, this is translation. I hope somebody can translate this. So she worked with magnets. She created this magnet body. She's the same one who actually train your facilitators here in to do the work generator. And you know, she's so modest that you don't know how actually tough, amazing young performance she is. So she performed this piece eight hours a day, you know, eight hours a day, two months. This is a hell because it's a magnets and she create constantly different the formation of the elements, sculptural elements. Wait, 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 we've done something wrong. Okay, I'll just show you some of this. If somebody can translate the, is, is in English. Quando eu pensei esse trabalho, eu pensei que eu ia ter essa sala magnética e a ação seria cobrir essas paredes e quando tudo tivesse completo, eu voltaria as peças para o chão, que são peças super pesadas. Então é como você ir para uma linha de produção e você tem uma coisa para produzir aquele dia e você tem que fazer aqui. Na verdade, a coisa primordial do trabalho é a ação. E é o que está intrínseco nessa ação. O imã no meu trabalho sempre foi um elemento que eu encontrei para conseguir discutir coisas visualmente e conceitualmente que são fundamentais, que são as questões das forças. Forças visíveis, invisíveis, forças políticas, sociais, sistemas de controle. Era como se ele revelasse o poder. Se a gente parar e pensar no mundo que a gente vive e nas experiências brutais de trabalho que a gente tem, e você vê que ainda existem pessoas que trabalham dessa forma, oito horas por dia, às vezes mais, pega uma pessoa que corta cana dez horas por dia e tenta fazer isso duas horas, você não consegue. 
sorry, it was just because there's so many examples, but so we stop here. But actually, it's deeply political work and is meditative in the same time. And she changed this amount of gravel and this, the stones every single day. It was, it was just incredible transformative piece, which goes into actually meditation on the end. Okay, so the next piece, it's completely different. Wait. And uh, you see, we are choosing the work, first of all, as far as possible from my own work, because I don't want anybody who look like me. I want the people to be original in their own thing, and they come out of, with their own culture. So maybe the, the next piece I want to show you, not this one, but I want to show you this piece, which is really from the central Brazil and deal with slavery. Eu trago a memória dos maus tratos. Então, eu trago em, em cena essa ideia desse holocausto que foi a escravidão. E eu comecei a pensar um corpo. Né? Um corpo que tivesse uma certa conexão com essa história, com esse passado, com esses fantasmas. surgiu a ideia da carne, né? da carne de charque, uma carne mista, né? mestiça, entre gordura e carne. Aí eu pensei na carne justamente como uma metáfora deste corpo de homens que foram escravizados. the branding of the body what was done in the slavery and uh, a dor e a ferida da escravidão negra né, no mundo não diz respeito apenas aos afro-brasileiros, afro-americanos, os escravos descendentes ou os homens que foram escravizados. E eu convido essas pessoas justamente para viver esse processo. So basically, he would take this dry meat and apply it to the bodies of performer, and then will heat and brand them. So they will not burn the body, but the, the action and the smell of burning meat, they will give them the memory of the slavery. It was such a moving piece. It, everybody was crying. So you see, the, the tools of performance art can go in so many different directions and can move you in a very profound way. So then, let me just... Uh, this is Grupo Empresa, that's another group from the central Brazil who are insane, by the way. <laughs> Wait, that's the... <laughs> it's preciso ação para você realmente transformar. E eu acho que a performance ela é esse ato máximo de uma busca de transformação, nem que seja individual, pessoal, pela ação. A gente propõe ali no Sesc o grupo empresa ativo e sob tensão criativa por todo esse período, e isso a gente nunca experimentou na nossa trajetória. In this group, the Ten people, two women e and por isso que a gente criou men. uma demanda tão intensa de serões performáticos. Everything is what you do is two months, eight hours long, different pieces, continuously creating the space and changing your space. Porque nós somos dez para produzir seis, sete, oito performances a cada dez dias, num processo intenso de criação.
Nós somos muito matéricos. É, geralmente, os nossos laboratórios, eles é, sujam muito, eles transformam muito as coisas. Nós somos regionais. E, e é... Sorry. So I just have to give you a glimpse of everything because I'm sorry everything is very long and of course we can't do it that long. Um, let me just go into something else. So now we come to the Greece. And the Greece was a completely different cultural background, different people, different uh, problems, cultural, economical and political and artistic, so we have different work. I mean, this is quite amazing work. ...προσπαθεί να περάσει εμπόδια, να ανοίξει πόρτες σε τείχους με τη χρήση ενός κλειδιού. Maybe, I just stop, wait a second. I just want to stop to explain to you. So what this happened, he creates seven spaces, and only he can enter in the first one and the last one. And there is no doors in between. And he only have the key. So with the key, he have to actually break the wall, just using simple little key to get to the last space to exit. Pretty incredible piece. So it's a sculpture in the same way. He tries to pass the body, to open the doors to the doors with the use of a key. Just the little key, that's it. So you see the effort, but you can translate it to prison, you can translate it to restrictions, you can translate it restrictions of freedom. I would like to ask the topic of freedom, so that everyone can be more personal from his own experiences. But at the end of this process, the experience of the personal or the metanastic, I would say, λόγω και της διαμόρφωσης του χώρου, γινόταν όλο και πιο έντονο. Η εικόνα που δημιουργόταν μέσα σε αυτό το χώρο θύμιζε κατά πολύ ένα τοπίο πολέμου, καταστροφής και κατάρρευσης. Καθημερινά ξεκινώντας την performance, προσπαθούσα να εξοικονομήσω ενέργεια, αλλά υπήρχαν κάποιες στιγμές οι οποίες με συνέπαιρνε το έργο και έδινα παραπάνω ενέργεια από όσο χρειαζόταν. Η επιλογή του να ανοίγω πόρτες στους στίχους είχε να κάνει με τη σωματική ελευθερία στον ίδιο το περιορισμένο χώρο αλλά παράλληλα και το συμβολισμό της πόρτας. Είτε κλείνεσαι, είτε αφήνεσαι ελεύθερος από κάποιο χώρο. So. I just want to stop there. So the public here, no, wait, I don't want to show you. So the public here start coming to these performances and they start supporting the energy of performer because it's so hard that every day you're performing eight hours and you need the entire support of the public. If you do this in empty museum, that then you feel terrible, the energy is gone. And the public become actually the main support. So the public will come in, the, in, the, in Greece, 54,000 people, which was the record. First they will go to method, they will do their own preparation, and they will come to see if something is long durational. And this is more or less the model that we would like to apply here. Here, to actually educate public first to see something long durational, but also to create these large communities that be, be, the performance become life, that becomes something that really everybody is touched and moved and, and participation that take place. So I just want to show you something short. So there's so many different works, and I have to say that I don't know much 
about the... Okay, okay this is a dance piece again. That we also produce. First have to die a little yourself. And this is where you left a part of you. This is the body nature. The nature and the body become one. Yes. All right. So one thing that I have to say, this is my second time in Kiev. First was very short, like two days, and now we am here another two days. But I want to keep coming because energy here, it's so special. You are in transmission. There's so many things are happening, you know, politically, economically, in every possible way. But that's what really keeps that energy of young people, you know, that your life and you have to really grow and you have to express yourself. So I have to say that I really don't know much of Kiev artists because I have to come here, I have to see the works, I have to go to the studios, I have to really be encountered. The only one piece that really emotionally touched me, you know, it, it was this the piece of uh, Zinaida Lichayeva, who she just did in relation to what's, you know, recent uh, situation happening on your square. And there was something there, emotional and poetical, that uh, really hits me. And when something hits me, then, for me, it's a good work of art. All right, so now we are back really to our conversation. I just want you to vote. I have not very short to read you part of my manifesto. You can choose yes or no, or just talk. What about manifesto? Yes, no? Oh my goodness. Yes or no, yes. <laughs> okay, can somebody come to help me with the pages? Okay, you come. Oh no, she's there, she's there. Okay. All right. 
I personally think that every artist should write his own manifesto. This is mine. An artist's life manifesto. An artist conduct in his life. An artist should not lie to himself and others. An artist should not steal ideas from other artists. An artist should not compromise for himself in regardless to the art market. An artist should not kill other human beings. An artist should not make himself into an idol. An artist should not make himself into an idol. Very important. An artist's relation to love life. An artist should absolutely avoid falling in love with another artist. It's a disaster. Okay. <laughs> An artist's relation, an artist, I, I'm doing really fast because I want to talk to you. An artist's relation to erotic. An artist should develop an erotic point of view in the world. An artist should be erotic. An artist should be erotic. An artist should be erotic. An artist's relation to suffering. An artist should suffer. From the suffering come the best work. Suffering brings transformation. Through the suffering, an artist transcends the spirit. Through the suffering, an artist transcends the spirit. An artist's relation to depression. An artist should not be depressed. Depression is disease and should be cured. Depression is not productive for an artist. An artist's relation to suicide. Suicide is the crime against life. An artist should not come in suicide. An artist's relation to inspiration. Wait, 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 there's so much we have. An artist's relation to inspiration. An artist should look deep inside himself for inspiration. The deeper he looks inside himself, the more universal he becomes. An artist is universe. An artist is universe. An artist is universe. An artist's relation to self-control, that's important. The artist should not have self-control about his life, not at all. The artist should have total self-control about his work. First you have to be experimental and then you have self-control. So the artist should have total self-control about his work, that's it. Next one. An artist's relation to transparency. The artist should give and receive in the same time. Trans transparency means receptive. Transparency means to give. Transparency means to receive. An artist's relation to symbols. An artist creates his own symbols. Symbols are an artist's language. The language must then be translated. Sometimes it's difficult to find the key. Sometimes it's difficult to find the key. An artist's relation to silence. An artist has to understand silence. An artist has to create a space for silence to enter his work. Silence is like an island in the middle of the turbulent ocean. Silence is like an island in the middle of the turbulent ocean. An artist's relation to solitude. An artist must make time for the long periods of solitude. Solitude is extremely important. Away from home, away from studio, away from family, away from friends. An artist should stay for a long period of time at the waterfalls. An artist should stay for a long period of time at the exploding volcanoes. An artist should stay for a long period of time looking in fast running rivers. An artist should stay for a long period of time looking at the horizon where the ocean and sky meet. An artist should stay for a long period of time looking at the stars in the night sky. An artist's conduct in relation to his work. An artist should avoid going to the studio every day. An artist should not treat his work schedule as a bank employee does. An artist should explore life and work only when the idea comes to him in a dream or during the day as a vision that arises as a surprise. An artist should not repeat himself. An artist should not overproduce. An artist should avoid art pollution. Okay. An artist's possessions.
Buddhist monks advise that it is best to have nine possessions in their life. This is just inspiration. One robe for the summer, one robe for the winter, one pair of shoes, one begging bowl for food, one mosquito net, one prayer book, one umbrella, one mat to sleep on, and one pair of glasses if he needs. An artist should decide for himself the minimum personal possession they should have. An artist should have more and more of less and less. A list, a list of artist friends. An artist should have friends that lift his spirit. A list of artist enemies. Enemies are very important. The Dalai Lama has said that it's easy to have compassion with the friends, but much more difficult to have compassion with enemies. An artist has to learn, learn to forgive. An artist has to learn to forgive. Oh, we're almost there. Aha. Uh -huh. Different death scenarios. An artist has to be aware of his own mortality. For an artist, it's not only important how he lives his life, but also how, how he dies. An artist should look at the symbols of his work for the sign of different death scenarios. An artist should die consciously without fear. An artist should die consciously without fear and without anger. Thank you. Different funeral scenarios. Uh -huh. Now we're on the end. <laughs> An artist should give instructions before the funeral so that everything is done like he wants to. The funeral is the artist's last art piece before leaving. The funeral is the artist's last piece before leaving. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Questions in there? No, I will just put it this on the top. Okay, okay, kids. Let's, let's have three questions at least, because we have a, wow, the rose is beautiful. So, you know we have microphones left and right. You can write me in the Russian, you can ask, ask in, 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 in you know, the, any language you want, and uh, tell me, and I will, the, somebody will translate to me and I will answer. Literally ask me anything, I answer everything. Hello, Maria. Hello. So happy to hear you here. Uh, my question will be like this. Um, I wish to, to talk in Russian and ask you in the Russian language. Я нашла себя в некоторой проблеме с чистым истинным моментом перформанса. Вначале пыталась прийти к этому путем того, что готовным быть, стопроцентно готовность в момент перформанса, когда обозначена дата, место, время, продакшн, реклама. Потом обнаружила, что эти моменты не совпадают, и ты делаешь перформанс там, где ты есть, и в тот момент, где ты внутренне ощущаешь, что ты готов к перформансу. Да, для меня вопрос следующий. Как для вас, где является истинный момент перформанса? Can you come on the stage? Somebody is translating to her. Who is translating to her now? Okay. So, come here. Look at the public. So, you know, performance is everything about here and now and the present of that moment. You can just be there and your energy have to be in your body. You can't be 
here with the body and in your head in Honolulu, I don't know where, Moscow. The body and the mind is one thing. When you establish that kind of you know, complete concentration yourself, then you can take this, this, can give this energy to the public, take the energy and give it back. It's all about being there, it's all about take your place. And that is really lots of training. Plus you have to find out, are you really a performance artist? So maybe you want to do something else. How you know? If you can't face these people here, then maybe change another thing to do. Face them. Let's stand here one minute. Let's see what happens. Create charisma. Own the place. And don't be afraid. Okay, how that feels? Not bad. <laughs> All right, next question. Yes. Yeah, I remember I've been to your performance at Sefferton Gallery in 2014 in London, and you took my hand and you so you said that, that I have special eyes, actually. And it's a book I just would like to sign and just can okay, you bless but This me? is very romantic. We have to answer questions here. I signed the book later. You have any question? You, you think that I had special eyes still. They changed by time. If you have special eyes, you know, look at this. We have all these people who are asking for the question. This is incredibly personal and selfish question, my dear, if you yeah. have special eyes or not. <laughs> Who cares right now? We have uh, to answer to all these people something yeah, they I really know. want to know. I have, I so, have so we can't do that. I will sign this book later on and, yeah. I will get, and then I will tell you this question. You. Thank you. I will put here on the chair. Okay, next. Hello. Hello, I'm here to the left. Hello. Hello. Uh, thank you. Just take it for being here, it's like especially for me because it's been a struggle to get here and I'm really thankful. Where do you come from? Uh, I came from Shanghai last morning. To That's to a China, my dear. Yeah. <laughs> That's a long trip. Yeah, it is. Welcome. And I, I have two questions. One is about actually my experience. You only have to, you can't ask two. We have to be democratic. One question, too many people. Well, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That's whoa. how things are, I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Um, then probably, probably Asian is more important because you rely, um, as I can see, it's only my perception, um, in a lot of ways on uh, Asian experience, Asian uh, philosophy, but you never mentioned uh, Asian artists and you never went to Asia with your program. Why so? You know, to start with, I am not inspired or I'm, I have Asian, Asian friends, artists, and I really like the work. But generally, I, for my work, I'm never inspired by another artist. Why? Because artists aspire by something else. So that means I'm inspired by a second hand, where I can go to the source. And the source are waterfalls and volcanoes and ocean and look into the sky in the, in the night and seeing these extraordinary monks who sit in the mountains in, 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 the, in, the, in the house for 10 years. They are the real thing. That my inspiration comes from. Art, we, we, we are doing this art from different inspiration. Everybody do this. But I just like to visit them. I like to see them. I, I, I know some of them. They're friends. But my inspiration comes from the source. Thank you. Thank you. This group. Good evening, Marina. Good Thank evening. Thank you so much for such an inspiring lecture. You're incredible public. You're sitting really two hours here. It's amazing. <laughs> and are you actually, it looks like it was not too boring, this lecture, if you're still here. It the was young fantastic. audience for me is the thermometer for everything. They don't give a shit. If they're bored, they just leave. So if you're all here, that means I'm doing well. My question is about body and modern technologies. How do you think that performance will be changed 
if modern technologies become more and more incorporated into a human body, what is the role of a cyborg body in the art then? Incredibly interesting question, because right now I'm doing myself. I'm interested in, uh, in virtual reality. I'm making my own avatar, actually three of them. First, young one, middle age, and very old one. So I can have three to play. And then I'm also doing something which is a parallel reality, that you can have the reality as we see, plus the virtual on the top. These all things are incredibly interesting to me. And why they're interesting? Because in my work, I realize that the physical body and mental body have limits, but virtual body doesn't. I could never levitate, but with virtual body I can. I could never walk on the knives, but with virtual body I can. So to experiment this kind of, you know, different pushing limits is very interesting. And unfortunately, we want or not, we, this is unstoppable progress of, of, the, of the cybernetic, robotics, artificial intelligence. You know what I can say? That, the, that um, science fiction of the 70s are reality today. That's it. Everything what we wrote before is true. So it's unstoppable. We have to see how we can make it meaningful. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Where do you come from? You look like a really guerrilla guy. I'm here. I'm local. I'm from Kiev. Where are you? I'm from Kiev. Okay. You mean guerrilla like partisan? Like, like a partisan. You look like, look the way you're standing. Come on, you own the space. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That's my home. So um, I have a question, um, like you said that time pressure is a really destructive thing, but like in real life there are situations when you experience it, uh, like for example you have exhibition and uh, there is a date, some uh, audience is coming, so uh, naturally you have like a conscious uh, uh, experience of this pressure which uh, is destructive, so what is your advice to uh, Okay. Overcome it. All right, Dr. Abramovich on the on your function. Okay, so you. my healthy. dear, I don't need to look more, more than just this event today. I was so stressed. You should see me behind the stage here. You know, I even if I have to do lecture, I get this stomach feeling. I'm in panic. I go to the bathroom 20 times even if I don't do anything. Just like stress. But if I don't have this kind of stress, I will be in panic why I don't have it. So it's somehow that kind of panic, that kind of no time, focus you. It's incredible. It's a part of creation. It's a part of the everything. Yeah. It's very interesting. So how I prepare? You know, I prepare in different ways. Like I put artists as present, for example. It took me one year I prepare myself. It's for like doing space program. I have to eat in the night and drink the water in the night in order the daytime that I don't do it. It was kind of complicated to change metabolism of your body. One year took me. But then before the performance of stress anyway. So that stress is a part of creative process. You can't do anything. The problem is if you don't have it, then I'm not sure how good it is. You know, the, I love the story of Maria Callas. He always, she always said this great sentence. She said, when you perform, you know, the great opera singer, she said, when you perform, you have to make sure that one part of the brain is completely controlled and other part is free and loose. And if you can create this balance between these two, then you have charismatic work. But that uh, takes so much. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Wow. When are we going to eat tonight? <laughs> My question is about public lectures like this one. Yeah. What are they for you? Very important. You know, when you come to my age, which this year is 71, by the way, which is serious, <laughs> you, you know, your energy, your energy is limited. And you have to think about the, what you leave to young generation of artists and to the public generally. You have to communicate your message, you have to communicate your ideas in a clear possible way. So this lecture really serves that. Plus, Kiev is an amazing place. You are the most incredible, look at you, you're all so young here. That means there is a need to hear another opinion and somebody else. And that really gives me you know, energy. And I mean, you don't think I'm tired? Of course I'm tired. I mean, I'm just running around. You know, my age group is sleeping already, but I'm still sitting in the front of you and answering questions. I think that's, it's very important. Duty of artists is not just making work, it's education, is the relation to the young, young audience, and really to give unconditionally your knowledge to young artists. That's Thanks absolutely so important. Yeah. Hello. 
thank you very much. Oh, there. I, was there. I, I, I love you, really, because you are God, the goddess of uh, performance and art. Uh, I have um, uh, a great idea. I want to create a museum of, of, of sex in Kiev. We have no yet. Uh, By the way, how is the, just a small question: Is how is the sex in Kiev generally talking? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to know: <laughs> It's good. Uh, I, I wish to create a modern, uh, honest art museum, sex uh, museum of sex in Kiev. Uh, what uh, would you advise me to do uh, at first? Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, first of all. I just want to tell you a little bit about sex generally. I think the sexual energy is the most important energy in our body. This energy comes from recreation and the way how we transform it I is feel. essential. Sexual energy can create violence, aggression, killing other human beings, also love, tenderness and spirituality. It's all there. So the sexual energy is the center of everything. And I think that you should show in your museum all aspects of that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Come back in Kiev uh, as much as possible. We love you. Uh, hello. Thank you very much once more. Uh, we are all very happy, as you see. And my good, good color of the hair, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, my my question is: In your autobiography book, you speak about your young idea uh, to make some paintings with the planes on the sky. And now, uh, f 50 years passed, and you are a world famous uh, artist. You are expected in. It's not that easy, by yes, the way, yes. but never mind. You know. Yes, yes. Uh, you are expected in everywhere like a rock star. And do you have now some dreams that you can realize? And uh, is there something that, that are you dreaming about? You know, the first thing I want to say to everybody, the book called, called uh, Walking Through the Walls is going to be translated in uh, Ukrainian language. I think next month it's coming out. And I really want you to read because, you know, it took me... I need to write this in my age now because I have to reflect what happened. And also, I am wise enough. I'm not angry anymore. The young people are so angry. That's a kind of rob motion. You know, you have to kind of forgive, leave this anger and seek what you can do constructive. And also when you're older, you have a big picture. Big picture is everything. So what I'm thinking about, I'm just thinking about how much time I have practically to deliver all what I want, my legacy, to create fantastic work here in Kiev with the hundreds of people and, and involve the huge community, how much time I really have physically and mentally before I get Alzheimer, wheelchair, cancer, uh, dementia, whatever shit, you know? I, maybe 10 years more, you know? And I want to use them wisely. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Hello. Uh, my name is Bogdan, I'm an artist from Kiev, and I have one simple question. Uh, what is the main difference between not knowing and don't understanding according to your artistic practice? Wow, that's a deep question. Are you religious? Are you? Are you spiritual? What? You? Uh, I think so, yes. What do you believe in? In God. <laughs> well, how describing the God? I really want to know, honestly. Uh, I think this is one of the main uh, question of my artistic practice. So uh, the question is so complicated. And, and my answer is almost impossible. Because this is, you know, if we know answers to everything, we will not be here. It's, we constantly have to have requests. But I really believe the spirituality is an extremely important part of human life. And uh, I don't know what you're doing, but whatever you're doing, you will find the answer. It's not me to tell you. You have to find the answer. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, Marina. Uh, my question is, uh, do you think it's an artist's place uh, to teach and educate the public? And if that ability comes to them, uh, should they act upon it? Uh, should be what? Sh should they act upon it? Uh, is it their duty to do so? Or should they uh, perhaps continue working in their own uh, personal uh, works? 
that's more private for them. You know, first of all, everybody has to find his own tool where he's best in. You know, there's so many artists that are great painters and the great, uh, uh, you know, filmmakers and the great writers. And, and you just find the best tool to express yourself. I mean, there's very few people actually perform. It's such a hard thing because look at my generation. My generation gave up a long time ago. They have dead pacemakers that don't exist. It's not easy to be up there and doing this stuff. So if this is not your tool, you find your tool. And you know, so many artists actually never sh show up you know, publicly like I do. They're sitting in the studios in solitude and the work is the one they communicate. And if it's this you call that you communicate with the work, then put everything into the work. I put everything into the, my dialogue with the public. Thank, Thank you. Wow, I'm getting tired, kids. You know, my age group have to sleep. What time is now? I'm really tired. Let's do two more questions, three more questions. Okay. Okay. Um, hello, Marina. I want to tell you, first of all, that you're incredible, gorgeous woman with, I don't know, crazy vibes that I think everybody feeling right now. It's amazing. I know what to do. I'm going to change. I'm going to sit in the chair, answer everything. Wait. <laughs> okay. Take your time. Wait, wait, wait. This is the best because then, ah, I just move the chairs. <sighs> it's always a way. Okay, tell me. I answer all the questions to the people standing there, this and this side, but really fast. Okay. I hate so, people waiting for us. So, so my question, what do I think about children, about babies? Because I believe that through them, we can, we can remember our true emotion, true feelings. So... And I, because I have one and I see all the time... Are you an artist too? Who, me? Yes. No. I don't know, I think uh, uh, maybe in some kind of... Uh, everybody no, artist. It doesn't exist, maybe you are, you're not, that's it. Are you? So what's the question with the child? Uh, do you feel this, that through the children we can remember our true feelings? Yeah, but the most important how you can... You don't need to use child for the tool to remember your own feeling. You have to wake up in the morning and be curious and be like a child yourself and you have to see every morning the world like just exists. That's how I never get old because I always wake up and I'm so curious and I want to try everything and I believe in all bullshit and I just want to live, you know. You have to have this will to live. This is, and then doesn't matter child is wonderful or not, but you come from you, not, it's not that you're waiting for him to give you that. Wow, you're so fire. I mean, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, next, oh no, next chair. Okay, I take my chair. <laughs> Tell me. Здравствуйте. Хотелось бы сказать прежде всего спасибо за лекцию. Вопрос будет короткий. В процессе вашего исследования жизни, в процессе создания перформанса, потому что мне кажется, он протяженности во всю вашу жизнь. Сейчас удалось ли постичь истину, дойти до истока энергетического, потому что это прежде всего обмен, и это большая сила, страшная сила, это то, что пугает меня на данный момент. Удалось ли понять? Wait, 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 wait. Long question, not clear. Just simple questions, simple answer are the best. So ask the simple question. It's too complicated. Can I tell you just a great story? There was a His Holiness Dalai Lama, which I love very much. I was in Germany somewhere, and there was a German philosopher, and he was asking His Holiness a question of 45 minutes, exposing how incredibly intelligent he is, quotations and blah, blah. And then His Holiness looked at him and said, I don't understand the question. Can you repeat it? And everybody said, no, 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 no. So, simple question. Что, что является, в чем кульминация энергии, которую вы получаете во время перформанса? Удается ли установить связь генетическую с поколениями, скажем так, генетическую память? Okay, kids, it's come on. You, it's too complicated. So you're talking about energy combination. Okay, make it simple question and then ask me again. What is you? It's too, I, you know, too complicated. Things are, you know, every simple question I've already answered. That's the beauty of it. We, and plus, we know all the answers anyway. We just want to have confirmation. 
You know when you go to the coffee reader and they tell you that you're going to do this and that? You know everything anyway, but you like to be told. Anyway. What about? No, which I'm telling you, you have to invite me. First, you know, does, doesn't work, just, just, just work like I come in. First, you have to want me, you have to invite me as an institute, then we come, and then we do the work. And then we make this large community. As we are in permanent, we come, we do things, and then we go. That's the, we are nomadic. <laughs> okay, let's finish on that. I can answer a million questions, but the main thing is to really show what our institute can do for you. And we can do a lot because I think the most important, the base of my institute is love for the human being and change of consciousness through love. Thank you. That's it. Wow. Whew. This was a lot of work. <laughs> it was so wonderful. Thank you. Thank everybody up and the second line and the third line and all the lines. All the cards. So Marina. Marina. Marina, thank you very much. Your glasses? I'll keep them. Um, your glasses. I think for, for everybody in this room, I think thank you for your generosity. For, for this. You no, will you just work. You will sign. Say yeah. something. For, for <laughs> it's the most difficult person to speak behind. Um, I think the one thing that I still want to tell you all, um, the Pinchukat Center still has fragile state. The work generator um, by Marina Abramovic is still on. You're very much invited. Many of our facilitators of this work are here. Thank you very much. Enjoy the evening and see you at the Pinchukat Center. <laughs>